Hello my friends, in today's tutorial I will show you how to create this awesome splatter effect in Photoshop. To do so, we'll start with a brand new document. To do that, we'll go to File, New, and create a new document. I'll make mine 3840 by 2160, 360 ppi. That's because this is going to be the thumbnail of this video. And click Create. Now with the new document created, we have to make a new layer on here on the right side. Click this button and that will create a new blank layer. And now we have to make our splatter. To make our splatter, we need to get a splatter brush. And I'm assuming that most of you guys don't have one. So I will show you exactly where to get one for free. So go into your brush over here and then go into your brush uh, dialog in the top. And here you go into the gear icon and then go to get more brushes. And this will take you to Adobe where you can get free assets and we will look for the splash brush. Once you open it, you have all these uh, catalogs of brushes that could, you could get for free. The one we are interested in today is this summer 2020. So once you locate this album, just click on download and that will download it into your downloads album onto your computer. Now that we've done that, we'll go back to Photoshop and here we'll go back to our brush go back into the brush settings and go to the gear again and this time import brushes because we need to import that album summer 2020 that it opens into our downloads to load it just double click on it and it would load it you will find it onto if you have a long list of brushes here it should be the very last album and as you can see, we have summer 2020 update and to open it, you click on this arrow and it will open and will show us all the brushes that are inside it. The brush we will be using for this tutorial, it's this uh, Spladoosh one over here. So click that and we are good to go. Now for the size of the brush, with the layer one selected, we have to make our splash. The size, I like to keep it about 1000 pixel. If you have it too big, like 1500, then you will end up with your computer going very slow and Photoshop will freak out. So keep it around 900, 1000, that is good. And now we have to have black as a foreground color, which I do not have right now. So just click on your keyboard D and that will uh, set it to the default, default colors, which is black and white. And now that we have black as a foreground color, all we have to do is just click in the middle of the image and it makes a splash. Now this splash is too small, so we have to build on it. So I will just keep clicking around it. And as you can see, this brush, every time I click, it changes directions and size. So that is awesome. And I just keep on clicking until I get the desired splash that I want. And we are getting close, maybe one more here. There you go, maybe we'll just go with that. That looks good for my splash. Maybe I'll give a couple of more. There you go, just so we can fit more of the image. Now we have to bring in our image. To do so, go to File, Place Embedded. And I have this image, it's not my image, I took it from Unsplash, so it's a stock image. But I really liked it and I thought it was gonna work really well with this effect. Click OK. And now I get to position it however I want. You can resize it if you need it to be bigger or smaller. I'm just going to play, place it here for now and click OK to accept the changes. Now I will make this layer of the lady invisible and I'll click back onto my splatter layer. Now we need to select our splash to make a selection of it. To do so, go to select, color range, then take your first color picker. By the way, fuzziness, I have a 200 range, I have it at 26. And with the first eyedropper, just click in the middle of your splash and that will make a selection. But you see, it didn't select everything. So I will go to the second picker that has the plus on it and I will just drag onto my splatter to make sure it selects all the black. And I will, I will also select the third one that has the minus and click a few times on the edges of my splatter onto the white background, make sure is not selecting my background. After we did all this, just click OK and you have a selection of the splatter. Now I will make my lady image active again and with the image active, just click on this masking button and now we are creating a mask. 
and it's looking awesome. I do want to reposition the lady a little bit and to do so you have to unlink this uh, picture from its mask. To do so just click on this uh, icon in the middle of it and now it disappears that means they are not linked anymore. Make sure your picture is selected not your uh, mask and now with the move tool I can just move it and I can resize it. If I need to resize it I can go command T and now I can make it bigger and there you go that is looking pretty good just like that great well we are not done we need to add a gradient on it to make it more you know fantasy like go to the adjustment layer over here and just go to gradient now pick any gradient from here it doesn't really matter i will just choose this one click ok and click ok again i will change the blending mode to screen now I need to create a clipping mask of this gradient to only affect the layer with the person. To do so, you can do this multiple ways. You can hold down option and hover between the two layers, the color grade one, the you know gradient and the lady. And then you have this crazy icon appear and just click on it and then it clips it. You can see. I'll do command Z to undo that. You can also just right click on your gradient and go to create clipping mask. That will do it as well. I'll do command Z. Or when you do have your, oops, I'm sorry. I will show you one more way in a second. Let me just uh, create a clipping mask for this one. And then also what I want to do is add a level adjustment. And for this one, I'll just take the blacks and move them inwards a little bit just to give it a little bit more contrast. And here is a third way to create a clipping mask and that is by using this icon over here. So click on that and that creates another clipping mask. Great. Now I want to change this gradient because I don't want it to be orange and purple. So double click on it. I can also change the angle of my gradient. Maybe I'll put it in an angle a little bit like that. If you wanted to have a little bit more uh, stronger change of color between the foreground and the background, you can go to size and you see the smaller you make the size, the more harsh the transition is. I'll keep it at 45 for this for now. I might change it a little bit later and click OK. And oh, I meant to change the color. Let's go back, double click on it, double click on the colors here. And I want something else. I have some good gradients here. And let's see, what will it work? Those are a little bit, I kind of like that one. Let's see, that one is good too. That's too pink. That one is kind of nice. I think I like the darker ones. That one is nice as well. I might go with that one. That's too uniform, maybe too much of a one color. Just click through it and you can see it in real time, what the image looks like. I think I'm going to go with this one. I think I liked this one. All right, we'll go with this one. Maybe the greenish one. Greenish one is nice too. All right, we will go with this one and click OK. Click OK again. And do we need to adjust our levels? Is it too contrasty? I don't know. I think it's good. We will go with that. And now we only have one thing to do and that is to right click on a layer and flatten image. And there you go. This is my splatter effect in Photoshop. I am very happy with the results. I hope you like this effect and it was useful to you. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing. I will see you in my next video.